Hi everybody! I can't believe how quickly this came together. As you can see I've completed the master reset and the t-state counter. I've also completed the instruction decoder and I've connected it to the control signal display. At this point I'm caught up with Ben's most recently released video. As promised, the control signal LEDs are all labeled, as well as all of the chips. In the finished product, I intend to have a printed legend with each chip's description. The two 8-pin rainbow cables are an experimental method of connecting the instruction decoder to the control signal display. Lastly, I've added a green filter to the dual display. Unfortunately, it doesn't help much. In the next segment, we'll take a look at how I programmed the instruction decoder EE proms. Okay, well let's take a look at the changes I've made to the programmer. And uh, first of all, we have the control signals and basically these will correspond to how you've arranged the control signals on your board. Um, on my board this is the uh, first bank on the left and uh, then this second group here is the next bank uh, to the right. Um, once you get these different control signals mapped out to their appropriate bits uh, then it's really easy to define all of the T states that you need and um, you just or together the different signals that you want to have active for each one of these uh, different kinds of T states uh, and then down below is where you actually define your instructions. So um, every instruction starts by putting out the program counter to the address register um, then uh, what I identify as a fetch is outputting from RAM to in this case the instruction register and so this is the fetch process. Um, the fetch also includes incrementing the program counter so that happens uh, in uh, T2 here and then from there it depends on the actual instruction. I'm not sure this is going to be the final instruction set. Um, there's some of the instructions that I'm not sure will stick around but like so much of this project they do serve an instructional purpose so um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I've got a couple of undefined instructions here they're still just basically no ops but at some point maybe there'll be conditional branches or uh, I've thought about something like complement the accumulator or maybe I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I've got another project in the works. Um, uh, I'll be posting more about that soon. Um, it handles the instruction set a little differently and uh, has got me thinking about uh, other ways I could do this. Um, I basically um, uh, model this after what I'm comfortable with which is um, you know 8080, Z80, um, a little bit of 6502 uh, family and in the way I model the instructions but there's other other ways to do it so anyway uh, the other thing that's kind of neat about this is it uh, steps you through programming uh, both of the EE proms and um, I'll show you how that works in the next segment okay we switched over to the serial monitor now and it's uh, basically asking us to insert EEPROM1 and press send. Uh, first of all, uh, it, well, you, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I've changed this setting from no line ending, I think it is, to carriage return. And um, that allows you to just hit the send button. If you don't want to do that, just put something up here in this box and hit the send button. <clears throat> but I don't like doing that. So uh, anyway, the other thing is uh, I don't need to program uh, EEPROM number one. So I've just got EEPROM number two in there and um, that will also serve an instructional purpose so that we can see it's, it contains different data than we're going to program the first time through and then I'll just leave it in place for the second uh, time around and reprogram it with what it actually should have. So we'll begin the process now where we're reading the EEPROM and uh, this is the data that should be in EEPROM number two but it's uh, 
it's going to program it with the data for EEPROM number one first. It is erasing the entire EEPROM. I could probably shorten that up. We're only using the first, uh, what is that, 128 bytes. All right, so um, now we can see the data is different uh, after programming, so that's good. That's what we'd expect. So now I'm going to leave uh, EEPROM number two in there, and I'm just going to hit the send button again. And uh, it read back the same thing that we just programmed. That's a good thing. And the results after programming it has the correct values again for EEPROM number two. Um, if we're looking closely here, we can see each one uh, in this case begins with a 08 and a 04. That's uh, this chip's part of a fetch instruction as far as anything on the right hand bank goes. And that uh, we can see they're in groups of five uh, because we have five T states one, two, three, four, five, and then again one, two, three, four, five. So uh, everything's looking good, and uh, let's move on to uh, checking some of the instructions and see if this actually works. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to break this up into two parts. So in part six, we'll load some programs and watch them execute. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. If you'd like to support this and other projects, there's a link in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.